Well, hi, good morning, and thanks so much for joining me in my shop. I'm pretty sure I'll get this guy all finished up today. Uh, first thing I want to do with him is, uh, since I've got it working, so it seems to be able to measure capacitors, is I want to test a few. I've got them out here. I just verify that the unit is working when it comes to measuring capacitance. And then, at the end of the uh, uh, yesterday's video, it seemed to me that the leakage test wasn't working properly. So we're going to investigate that. And hopefully that's the end of that. So, uh, great. Okay. Uh, but just before I get going, uh, because you may be Canadian and you would know what I'm going to say, but you, chances are you're not Canadian. Chances are you're American, British, German, or any one of another dozens of countries, uh, people who like watching my videos. So, just a little news here from Canada. Our uh, Prime Minister was on television last night. He doesn't uh, make public television statements very often at all. It's usually something pretty important. And so he was on television last night to basically look us all right in the eyes and tell us that the second wave is ongoing here in Canada now. And the expectation is the second wave of the virus is going to be much, much, much worse. And that's what history tells us about these things. And uh, to get ready and to you know do all those things I'm going to all the things we're supposed to do we all know what they are and uh, it, to reassure uh, Canadians that the Canadian government is going to do its best to keep people from falling through the cracks uh, as we proceed our way through this for the next six months or so uh, no, no words on vaccines we don't need to hear from him about vaccines we all know the story about vaccines so uh, vaccines are being developed here too being tested here too just like in many other countries around the world so something will happen there but it's going to be so late in the game it's not going to play a role in what's going to happen right now so that's the story here in Canada it's rather scary um, but it is what it is so and if you are Canadian um, let's just pat ourselves on the back for having been fairly well behaved as a nation through this thing and let's just hope that we continue to pull together, which appears to be the case here, uh, because that's the only way you can fight this enemy, is for all of us to stay together and uh, to do the right thing and don't do anything stupid in that. So, nevertheless, a whole bunch of Canadians uh, are, are, are going to be killed by this thing, and I just hope I'm not one of them, quite frankly. My wife and I are doing everything we can to make sure we don't join in the group you know I'm retired I live alone with my wife and two cats we don't have a large circle of friends here because we moved a few years ago and we're not seeing anybody uh, our lives have hardly been disrupted by this virus I, I have to admit that and we realize that that many other people in the world and Canadians too because of their circumstances and young families things like that uh, the challenges are completely different than they are for someone like my wife and I. We're healthy, recently retired people. Um, so, lucky, we're lucky. We're very lucky, and I know it. I just wish I could share that luck, but I'm afraid we're all in this kind of together, and we're all in this kind of alone at the same time. So, uh, protect yourself. That's your primary duty. Protect yourself. Now, how about a capacitor? I could have been doing something while I was talking there, huh? Duh, duh, duh. Let's get one out. I can see what's going to happen here. If I put these here, I'm going to get these all mixed up. That's there. Put that there. Put that there. Let's turn them on. Yeah, we will start with this one. I can take it out and clip it on. First one's a point zero 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 five capacitor. <clears throat> okay, so we're in discharge position. We're ready for a regular type capacitor here. I'm on the 0.01 scale to read a 0.05. So that would mean this thing should read 5 on the capacitor scale. I think that's what that interprets. I think it should come up to about here. If I've got it right, I probably don't. Let's see what happens. Remember, it's where it's where the eye opens. Mm. Oh, here we are. You can 
see that by the way the eye is operating there still is some I, I would call it I, I think it's because the slider is so lightly contacting the uh, the uh, uh, resistive wire turns inside the control but there we are that's quite clearly the right spot and what does it say so there's 0.5 right there so if we multiply 0.5 times 0.01, I think, don't we get 0 0.005? 0 0.005, oh, that's what this is. Did I say it was a 0.05? It's a 0 0.005. Okay, hey, that's perfect. That's the way to test it. A blind test. Let's try another one now. So this is, this is a 0 0.05. Expected to pop open over here. There it is. A lot of very uh, precise. And here it's on six instead of five, so it's, it's reading a little high here. Generally speaking, when I'm using this device, I'm really trying to determine the condition of an old capacitor. I, just, I would never use one of these to measure the. Uh, you know, to check a new capacitor because I have easier instruments. I have this, this fantastic thing here. But what this can't do is determine if the capacitor is leaky when high voltage is pressed on it. That's why you need this kind of instrument. Okay. Now, um, we just went up by a factor of 10. Didn't we? So open off scale down here. So this is the 0.5. Let's change scales then, because when you get out towards the end of these, of these guys, they're not very good. So we'll, we'll go on a times one. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 sitting right here. Uh oh. Hmm. What's, uh, what's up with this? Same thing way up at the top here, even further up. Maybe things aren't so good here. Let's make sure that. So, in that reading, this is a thousand here. I mean, that's like 200,000 up here. <clears throat> Maybe I need to go. Let's go this way. Let's just try everything here and see what happens. Same thing up at the top. A little bit disappointing. So there's another setting here, and it's got EXT scale. C external. It's got to be external scale. External because right below it is external standard. Uh, that didn't work out, did it? So just no chance there's anything wrong with this capacitor, really. So that is a 496, which would be the same as a 5,000 nanofarad. 5,000 nanofarad. No, 500. That'd be the same as a 500 nanofarad, which is a 0.5, which is what it is. Now, every time I start calculating in here, if you're a regular viewer, you probably grab your calculator because you know I'm going to get it wrong. Well, I don't know what to make of that. Um, that's a little disappointing because really, times one and 0.5 is sitting right there. Is it the scale? 
Uh, let's see if I got a, a bit of a smaller capacitor here. Let's try. Let's try a 0 0.03. That doesn't make sense. I want to try a, a 0 0.1. Let's try a 0 0.1. That's really what I would want to try. <laughs> oh. Okay, so this is a 0.1. It's a lower voltage. It's 160 volt, but it's a 0.1. 0.1. So 0.1 should. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Still have a sore rib here. I don't want to cough. Well, okay. Anyway, so we're on the times one scale. 0.1 is sitting way up here. So 0.01. That's a change of 100. So it's a. 0.01 times 10 gives you 0.1. So this is the spot. So this should be open. It is open. Again, it's a little high. You know, there's some calibration in here. Maybe, maybe I should, once I have, maybe that's the thing to do. Go through the calibration procedures. Again, I'm not terribly interested in precision here. It's really a go no go thing, but. So let's try something quite different. We'll try one of these electrolytic capacitors. Okay, put these on the right way. Positive terminals on the outside. Fifteen microfarads. I set this to electrolytic. Sure, if that's required for doing this test, we'll find out here. 15, we'll go to the times one. 15 appears on the scale, well, almost where it is right now. Way high. Now, is this switch important here? Hmm. Now it is playing a role way off. So we're gonna I think I'm gonna attribute this to calibration problems. When I say way off, you know this is not a large amount of scale up here. It's just like a lot of radios and when you get to the end of the scale things get really crunched. So maybe a little bit of calibration to bring that down into the proper proper range. So I think that's the discovery. I don't think I have to do any more of this. The discovery is the unit should be calibrated. And I guess there's really no surprise. I really hadn't thought hard about it until now. So let's carry on with the other issue here. Uh, can you check leakage with this guy? We'll put this switch back down here. And pick one of these new capacitors. There's no, there should be no leakage detectable here. So this should work the same as my other uh, Heathkit capacitor checker. As soon as I flip it on to leakage test, the voltage is applied to the tran to the uh, capacitor. Some current rushes in. While the current's rushing in, the device thinks it's a leak. Current going in. This will close. And as the capacitor charges up, it takes a fraction of a second for a small one like this. The eye should pop open as the charge current disappears. All that remains then is the leakage current, which should be zero in this case. That's what we should see. So we'll start with a nice 15 volts. This capacitor is leaking like a sieve, according to this machine. Worse than that, there's a leak right between here. Look at that. Not even, don't even have anything hooked up to it. Clearly, there's something wrong. Now, the weird thing is, I thought I used this before. I monkeyed around with this control. Let's start by. Uh, measuring the voltage here and just see what kind of voltage is really being put on the capacitor. Done this before uh, when I first poked around with this and the result was uh, it was actually extremely accurate. 
not like my other uh, capacitor checker that's not accurate at all the voltage it claims is not the voltage that's coming out of it okay so we're already seeing a little voltage here so on the 50 volt scale that's 20 volts and we're dialed into 15 here okay we'll take it down Oop. let's watch the meter so that's the 50 volt scale there. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. And, uh, 15 volt scale, three on the dial. 15 volt scale, and it shows 11. This is way different than before. Why is that? Why, why am I not getting the same result here? Of course, has something happened that's caused this to change too? I can't imagine that. Let's go up. 50 volt scale. 3 volts is showing up as uh, 10 on that scale. That's supposed to be 6 volts. 10 volts. 10, 10 volts should be here. What, what am I doing here? Uh, let's check the zero on the meter good got me let's keep going uh, that's 15 volts showing 20 25 volts showing 30 50 volts off the scale 50 volts showing oh, on no, no, it's my own meter now I'm on the 150 scale and now it's showing let's go let's go down yeah you know, see it just depends which scale you pick how accurate you want your readings so that's 100 volts, so, and I mean it's within the range, right? This is 150 and it's showing 140. How high does it go? That's 200 showing 175, 250. Why are you so low? How come I got myself convinced that this was dead on? That's 300 showing 250, it's just, just low all the way. So we're at 450 now, it's 400. 500 is 450. 600, it looks like 600 might be 600. That's a high voltage too. 600 is over 600, according to my meter, my meter of question. Because I'm a little bit interested in doing this with a little more precision, I'm gonna use a, a what is, I'm sure, a more reliable meter here. Ooh, watch where you're grabbing, Jim. I think when you have 600 volts on these leads, it's <clears throat> it's really 600 volts, but could be could be restricted by series resistance and stuff like that. Maybe if you grabbed it, it wouldn't kill you. Probably they would make this instrument so you can't get killed that easily. And you're up putting capacitors on and off here, and accidentally leaving the thing on. The chance of getting a shock is really high. Surely the designers of this thought about that. Surely they got enough shocks while they were working on designing this that they figured it out. 750 volts on this meter. Oops, let's put it there. 1000 volts DC on the meter. Okay, so this is the 6 volt setting. I think this is, <laughs> I'm going to end up not trusting my meter here. 3 volts, maybe this is where I thought it was dead on. 6 volts, that's 10 volts, 15 volts, 25, 50, 300, it's a little low now, 400, 500, it's a little low, 600 big ones, but that's high. Yikes. Now, should I put my fingers on there and see what happens? No. If you could get a real shock off this uh, puppy here, a serious shock, I think there'd be huge warnings on it. It'd just be, they, just, they wouldn't do it. They just wouldn't do it. They would not do it. So it must be some kind of serious resistance in there. Sounds like famous last words. So the voltage is there. Yes, Peanut. My cat has arrived for the 
Good morning, let me outside. Okay, okay, okay. It's a bit of a ritual here. But, you know, it's good to have some rituals in life. Introducing Mr. Peanut. Way over there. That's the wrong side of the door. Okay. Do you want to, what do you want? You want to go outside, right? Hold. Okay, I have to go do the cat thing for a minute or two, and then I'll continue on here. Of course, often between these little sections of video you're watching in my videos, I'm actually out of the shop and doing something else, and then I come back in, and sometimes I'm watching TV. Oh my God, I shouldn't be doing that. So just watching a little bit on TV and I was reminded again by something I have come to believe about people uh, just based on you know my experience in life this is this is my own idea people really don't care if people die what they care about is how they die and I think we have a fantastic example of this in the United States right now and, and don't take this the wrong way let's just look at this very objectively so uh, some time ago a woman was shot in her home a, a totally innocent woman shot by the police that's a terrible thing okay that's one that's one person one person meanwhile and, and people are upset about this of course they're in the streets there's all kinds of stuff going on about this one person who was shot quite quite some time ago now but every day a thousand people are dying from from the, the disease many 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 of which could have been stopped every day so the next day there's an additional thousand so now it's two thousand and the next day it's three thousand the next day it's four thousand and all those days people are in the streets about the one about the one because of the way they died obviously objectively the one doesn't matter it's the 3,000, the 4,000, the 8,000, the 10,000, the 20,000, the 200,000 people have died, but you're still in the streets about the one. You're going to think about that just for a minute. People are upset about how people die, not that they die. There you go. That's my own personal philosophy. Uh, check yourself if that's what's going on in your head. I think that's not the right way to think about it. I'm not trying to diminish the one. I'm trying to boost up the tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. Oh my God. I'm not supposed to do that on these videos. We're trying to hide. They're trying to hide here. Let's hide. Let's hide. So I've got a bunch of really good choices of bad capacitors to look for leakage in. But the thing is, I won't know. Well, let's try one. Let's try one. Because I have the feeling this thing doesn't work at all. Well, I just did one. Well, I did a new one, didn't I? So, kind of stupid. We'll, we'll do this. The eye's already closed. It's already closed. Clearly something's amiss. But let me go through it here. What could possibly happen? Well, there, there's one thing that can happen. I've seen this in yesterday's video. So you jack up a charge on the capacitor, and then when you relax the, the pressure from the machine on the capacitor, the capacitor pushes back in, and the eye behaves backwards, kind of. You can picture all that? So we go up, of course. It's just going to show leak. Now we go down. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty sad capacitor. A little tiny wink has. Let's go up, down, down, up, 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 down, down. I mean, so it's doing something, but it's convincing itself that this is a uh, this is a leaky capacitor. Super sensitive machine. Okay, I think there's definitely something wrong. I don't think I need, I was, I was going to double, double check these on another capacitor checker. No need for that. Um, we should probably start by, by wondering if this has to be in a particular position for this to work. I, I, I highly doubt it. This should pop open. It should be open. If something's in the wrong spot, That's interesting. This appears to be not working 
in the opposite way now. Okay, so. Another good thing would be to read the manual and perform all the uh, calibration processes. This is beyond calibration though, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so as you can see, I've got part of the manual up on the screen now, and they, uh, we're going to go through this, and hopefully this will lead me to something that's out of sorts in this unit. Now, I'm going on the assumption that this thing worked properly at one point. Whoever built it, factory or in the home, whoever did it, got it to work. And since then, something has happened which is causing it to behave the way it's behaving now. Could be could be somebody built this and they didn't care about this this part of it the leakage test and it never worked and uh, could be so can't be sure let's take a look at what it says in the manual here look at the first statement if any of the following steps did not produce the desired results turn the instrument off and refer to the in case of difficulty section let's just go right there because we already know something's not working quite right I've already done this, it's way down here, and I'm afraid to say it's quite disappointing. In case of difficulty. Okay, recheck the wiring. 90% of repairs are from bad soldering. Make sure all the tubes light up properly, did that. Check the tubes of the tube tester, did that. Check the values of the component parts, did that. Be sure the proper part has been wired into the circuit. I haven't seen anything that makes me think an error was made. Check for bits of solder, wire ends, or other foreign matter. Oh my god, really? This is what they're telling you to do? Oops, sorry about that. Here we are. Check for bits of solder. If after careful checks the trouble is not located and a voltmeter is available, check the voltage readings against those found on the schematic diagram. I did that. A review of the circuit description will prove helpful in indicating where to look for trouble. No, I wanted it to be here. Mm. Yikes, factory repair service. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Well, that's a little disappointing. So basically what they're saying is it's a construction problem. You, you've done something wrong. Look carefully, you'll find it. That's what this is. Uh... Hell, is that really the case here? So I think I'm going to go through because I do. I guess I do want to do a little bit of calibration here. We'll go through this, and along the way, maybe we'll hit something that'll clue me in as to what is going wrong. So here we go. Now I'm looking at the whole. Uh, on, on the screen I'm looking at in my shop here, I see the entire manual full screen, but you see just the top of it at the bottom of your screen, and there's a good chance I'm going to not show you the part I'm reading at times here, so I just try to be careful to not let that happen. Uh, turn the instrument on, a few seconds, I should be green. Set the controls, I can set the controls right now. Bridge leakage in the bridge position. Generator internal. Type of switch any. Any. Voltage set to three, that's the minimum. Power factor set to zero, that's where it is. Range switch asterisk. Four positions, uh, oops, oops, yeah, I almost did it there. There we are. Four positions, R times one through C times one, the I tube should be closed with the balance control in any position except maximum clockwise. Oh yeah, let's try that. Okay, I'll start it up now. Positions R times 1 through C times 1. So that's basically all the way from here to here. Just ignoring these two special external things here. The I should be closed with the balance control in any position except maximum clockwise. Maximum clockwise. Okay, it opened. Hmm. It opens here. Calibration problem, perhaps. 
position except maximum clockwise. Well, wow. I don't think that's right. Basically, I have no capacitor connected, and it's telling me the capacitance between the terminals. I don't know what's telling me. It's not telling me anything very precise. So maybe there's a problem right there. Position the balance control maximum clockwise, and with your finger, touch the negative test terminal. Position the balance control maximum clockwise. Touch the negative terminal. Wait, what happened there? Oh, yeah, position the balance control clockwise. With your finger, touch the negative test terminal. The eye tube should tend to close when the range switch is on settings R100 through C.01. Well, I'm in that range. Look at that. Probably, be, I'm going to take a guess. I'm injecting a big hum into here with my finger and uh, that's setting up enough voltages on the tubes in that to cause the, the eye to close. What happens if you go outside that range you get a shock. So it's not doing much on R100. The eye should tend to close, tend to close when the range switch so it's barely doing anything there it's, and X times 0.01 Uh, that's, I guess that's kind of what they're getting at there. Um, next. Set the range switch to C external scale. C external scale. The eye tube should close regardless of the balance control position. That's the case. Now set the range switch to external standard. In this position, the eye should be open regardless of the position. It's moving a bit, but it's open. As before, touching the negative test terminal or the red external standard terminal should close the eye. Yes, it does. External standard is here. It said red, right? The red external standard. Same thing. So far, so good. Now, go back to the top of the page. To the right. Switch the generator switch to external position. The eye should remain open regardless of the range switch or balance control. Switch this. Range, switch, or balance control. I, I, I guess that's what they're after. Okay, voltage test. Connect the voltmeter to the test terminals set bridge leakage switch to leakage type to electrolytic and step the voltage through at 16 position I did that it came out okay bridge calibration connect the 200 ohm 1% precision resistor 200 ohms 1% hmm 200 200. Let's see if they've got such a thing. These are all my two high quality resistors. Two, they start with the number two. So 200 right here. Two. Two ohms. So here's a 200 ohm resistor. Red, black, red. Check it with this guy. My 
experience with the new resistors is they're really pretty close. Pretty darn close, usually. Let's see what he says. 199.2. Boy, that sounds like 200 to me. What do we do with it? Do the test terminals. in set the range switch to R times one set the bridge leakage switch to the bridge position set the generator switch to internal push a knob onto the balance control shaft I guess they're I guess you know you're in the course you're looking at a manual that's instructing you in the course of building this thing. So I guess you haven't reached the point where the knobs are on. Set the generator, push a knob bushing, a knob bushing, a knob bushing. Are they talking about that? Oh my gosh. I'm. Hmm. I get the impression you're supposed to have that onto the knob. And then you. What's it say? It says. Uh, adjust the shaft very carefully for maximum opening of the eye tube. Position the pointer knob so the pointer index line is straight and down and is over the number one. Right there, number one. So this is a calibration of the knob position and it's already in. And surely it's locked in there. How can I ever get that out? Whew. I mean, I, I just pulled this off with a huge amount of force and, and this came with this. Oh boy. Well, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Maybe I don't have to even think about it. Let's, let's put it back on. And what's it say exactly? Adjust the shaft very carefully for maximum opening of the eye tube. Position the pointer knob so the pointer index line is straight down and is over one. It's not. It's off by a little bit. This is the primary calibration of this dial. Once this is done, the pointer, then from then on you do all the rest of the calibration with where the pointer is. It's not in the right spot. How can you? Uh, how can you? How can you deal with this? How would I ever pull that out? I have to get under it and hook it with something, and then yank with a lot of force because I already did a lot of force. For what sake? For the sake of moving this over here, gaining better calibration. It's not going to do anything about the problem with the leakage test. That's for sure. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to note the situation here and carry on because I can see there's potentially some destruction, destruction, destruction involved in, potential destruction involved in trying to fix it. So it's a little out. So again, I'm not going to be making precision measurements with this unit. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, moving on. Center of the external standard scale. The center of the external, yeah, that's right. That's the one at the center of the external standard scale. Uh, push the knob partially onto the bushing, as before. Remove the knob and bushing together. 
Also, fully insert the, insert the bushing in the knob and replace the pointer on its shaft. So I think given the right circumstances, you could yank that bushing out from inside that knob. You could do it. Remove the 200 and keep it for later. Okay, I'll keep it. Leakage calibration. Here we are, now we're cooking. There are two calibration procedures which can be used. The first without and the second with a milliammeter. Let's do them both. The first is quite satisfactory. However, the second procedure will provide greater accuracy. Well, I just want this thing to work at this point. Calibration with no milliammeter. Turn the instrument on, allow it to warm up. Done. It. Connect a 100K resistor across the test terminals. 100 thousand ohms. So these are actually unusual resistor numbers. It's a, you know, resistor numbers are you know, those strange things. Uh, uh, 22, uh, 47, 12, 12, stuff like that. It's not often they're exactly uh, like a hundred. I have a whole set of resistors that are exactly that. They're all in tens. I don't follow that other uh, standard. Well, what are we looking for again? We're looking for a 100. It says right there, brown, black, yellow. So just look for the yellow. Look for the yellow. Here's the yellow. 100K. Yes, 100K. Assumption is that this test meter is accurate, very accurate. That's been my experience with it. One hundred and two. Okay, one hundred and two. So it's will be two percent high. Let's just try another one. So a high precision resistor would be a, like a one percent. That would be within one in a hundred. I don't know how these ones are uh, gold. They have a gold band. What's a gold? What's a gold band? Gold. One hundred and two point nine. At some point you start wondering about the instrument you're using. Hundred and three. Maybe a little bit of overkill here, but uh, if I have an exactly, if I convince myself I have an exactly 100K resistor, why wouldn't I use it? Okay, so you know, this is really bad science here. I like the answer on this meter, so I'm going to believe this one. I learned yesterday that uh, um, Albert Einstein's theories and, and math around uh, relativity, that he didn't actually discover it first. Can you believe it? Two other scientists or mathematicians discovered the formulas that he discovered. What they didn't discover is what it meant. They didn't figure out what it is they had in front of them. And I don't know how much earlier it was. I don't think it was much earlier, just a few years. I really don't know, though. But the thing about Einstein was he realized what the implications were of his, uh, of his stuff. I guess those other guys must have been kicking themselves in the rear. 
Okay. 100K. Set the controls as follows. Voltage, 300. Um, I'm just going to put this on discharge while we're doing that. 300. Type, electrolytic. Bridge, leakage to leakage, leakage. Now, what happens? Adjust the eye tube to just closed with the top AD calibrate control. Uh oh. The what? So there's three calibrations here at the top. This would be the top. I guess this is what they're talking about, the top. Is there any more calibration guys in here? No, that's it, the three of them. So I think top means top. Let's just do it. Sorry, I stepped in front of the camera. And what do you do? You turn it until the eye tube just closed. Just the closed. Move the bridge leakage switch to discharge and remove. The, yeah, that was a 300 volt test. Here. Connect a 1.5 mega ohm resistor across the test. Well, the 1.5. That's another weird number. What are the chances I've got a 1.5 here? pretty good so I'm, uh, I'm acquiring quite a bit of stuff just now for my shop including components like these and all kinds of things I'm a very kind person who's basically unloading their stuff on me everything from test equipment like this like this piece here I'm working on the components like the one I'm going to test. Oh, I'm going to read this on my other. I am uh, highly reliable now. I believe this one more than the other one. It's all about faith, you know. What's this supposed to be? This is supposed to be 1.5 mega ohms. Wow. And oh, up here, up here, up here, up here. You're not going to get much closer than that. That's fantastic. 1.5. Yeah, so when the, you're going to see some stuff come in here. Uh, radios too are actually coming from this kind person. And I'm going to be fixing up their radio collection and they're going to be handing me stuff. That's cool. What's next now? Six, number seven, reduce the voltage switch setting and rotate the two mega ohm control until the meter reads 15. Whoa, 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 what meter? Wait, we're doing this without a meter. Is that? Oh, isn't that funny? You see how I have the page on the screen? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Watch this. How do mistakes get made? Okay. Wrong. Now we're on the right side. Set the voltage controls as follows. 25 volts. 25 volts. Type mini lit mini lytic. Mini -lytic. I don't even know what that is. Bridge leakage to leakage. Adjust the eye tube to just closed with the bottom calibrate control. Okay. closed. Hmm. This may be the sign of a problem. Let's go the other way. Better 
goes. Chest closed. Right there. Okay. It's interesting. No, it's not. Next, too many things are interesting to me. Just the eye tube just closed. Did that. Number eight. Set the controls as follows. Three volts. Paper. Leakage. The center calibrate control now. Must be a calibrate control for each one of these settings. That's what I'm doing. Center one. Turn the bridge leakage switch to discharge. Remove the resistor. Okay. Calibration with a milliameter. So we won't do this because the way we did it did fine. Let's just make sure we don't miss something top on the right, number seven. Boy, oh, I'm lucky I didn't skip over there. Keep going. So it's the same thing over again, just watching an ammeter. Leakage reference check. Well, this is a big, long dissertation here. Due to component tolerances and line voltage variations, it is usually not possible to draw two milliamps from the power supply on the 25 volt setting of the voltage switch. And why do we care about that? To determine the degree of closure of the I tube after short conditions, to determine the degree of the closure of the I tube under short conditions. Okay. Set the voltage switch to 25. Bridge leakage switch to leakage. Bridge leakage switch to leakage. And type switch to electrolytic. Momentarily short the test terminal with a screwdriver and observe the I tube. The size of the opening remaining should be mentally retained as an indication <laughs> of short conditions on the 25 set, 25 volt setting only. Mentally retained. Oh my God, this is a disaster. Um, men mental retention. Short it temporarily. It is the test terminals. Momentarily short the test terminals with a screwdriver and observe the eye tube. The size of the opening remaining. Picking a really nice screwdriver to short it with. Ah, this is a lovely one. So what they're saying is if you put a shorted capacitor in here, that's what you'll see at 25 volts. N almost closed all the way. This is just momentarily. The size of the opening remaining should be mentally retained as an indication of short conditions on the 25 volt setting only. The 50 volt position should completely close the eye. Yeah. Note a com completely shorted capacitor will be detected during the value test, but don't you do that secondly? It is not recommended that the leakage test be performed on a capacitor known to be shorted. 
That's why you're temporarily shorting that. But I would tend to use the leakage test and discover the short at that time. So the message here is, got a shorted capacitor, get it off your tester. Okay. I2 positioning with the bridge leakage switch in the bridge position. Rotate the balance control for a very narrow opening. Okay. Make it a little bigger, you can see it in the camera. Rotate the eye in its mounting clip until the eye. So this is just getting the eye rotated right. You know, it's straight already. It's good. Install the cabinet. What? This is it? We've hit the end of the road here already? Install the cabinet. Operations. Let's take this uh, 1.5 mega ohm resistor again and try to measure its resistance. We'll try to use the unit the way it's supposed to be used. Discharge. This is kind of designed for high value resistances. I don't. So putting in a 1.5 is a good idea. One point five mega ohms. So we put this on bridge, and then we try to, to find the magic spot. Let's go through each of these. Shouldn't show up. 10k. So we should see it now. There we are. It's a lot easier just to read it off a meter, isn't it? There it is. So the R, the R is this one. So that's 150, 150 there. Times 10. K. So that's it, that's 1.5 mega ohms, but it, it should really be sitting here. But it's certainly working. Okay, that's great. Um, so then we do a capacitance. Let's, let's try a capacitor in here. Point zero zero five. Actually, this is point zero zero four seven is what these are actually set to. Be a shock doing that? You could if this was set to leakage and this was left way high and you're holding your capacitor like that. Again, don't know for sure what you would feel with this thing because maybe it's got the current so restricted. on there. Set it to bridge. Should set this down. Probably leave it, always leave it low. Set this somewhere over here, any old place, and see what happens. What happens? What happens? So there's a spot. So, uh, capacitance range point basically 0 0.5 times 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and there you are. That's what this is. No, this is 0 0.005, oh, 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 oh. 0.01, yeah, it's not, not 0 0.01 times 5, it's 0 0.01 times 0 0.5. It's correct. Okay, that's close. Now it's time for the leak test and see if this calibration thing somehow corrected that. Take a 
really disgusting looking capacitor here. Wreck it up even as I go and use it. Getting wax on everything. Go right in there. I guess the rule is never leave this on leakage. That would be the safety rule. Okay, how big are you? Now we we're going to do leakage test. But let's use the bridge first. See now, there's a little tiny opening happening here. Probably can't even see it on the camera. Oh, you can barely see it. What's that mean? Does that mean that's it? My experience is leaky capacitors cannot be tested accurately. So in this case, it would be. 0.01 times 1. So that's a 0.01 capacitor. I bet you it is. Now, is it leaky? Oh, it didn't close. What's that mean? Something funny there. What was, the, what was happening there? It didn't quite move smoothly 50 it's closing 25 it's wide open it's quite interesting my, my other tester wouldn't wouldn't never be this you know 25 wide open 50 closed they, they'd both be but it's working it's a calibration issue all that time is that so Not really so. 0 0.007. Far from a 0 0.01. Let's give it another. Let's give it another one. So just calibration. Don't leave it on leakage. Remember the rule. The rule. Remember the rule. .05 Leakage Good at 25 Good at 50 Good at 100 Have I got it hooked up? 150 No leak in this thing? Come on, really? 350 400 But There could be smoke coming out of it by now So I didn't see any charge up or anything. Uh, well, what am I doing wrong here? This doesn't matter. We're still on electrolytic. <gasps> oh, 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 bad. I'm a bad boy. Bad boy. Bad boy. Okay, so take this back down. Put this back here. Well, it's still open. There, it closes. 15 to 25. Very distinct difference. Now I gotta get that other capacitor back on here. Which one was it? It was this one here. This is a bit of a problem with this unit is remembering this. Closed already? I didn't take it off leakage again. Close. So when I open this up, the eye opens up. Excellent. Okay, so this is a terribly leaky. So, so this guy seems to be a little more selective in assessing the leaks on capacitors than my other unit. My other unit only has four test voltages, four or five test voltages. Very good. Calibration. I would never have really, I wouldn't have bet on that, but that was the issue. Well, that's fine. That's great. We're done. It's good to go. I got to find a place in my shop for him now, and uh, I'm gonna put him close to the other capacitor checker. Might scare the other guy a little bit because he looks extra modern. Eh? It's, got, it's got the newer um, Heathkit look to it. Yeah, <laughs> newer. That's kind of a pun. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I got a couple more 
I got two more, uh, I got two tube testers to take a look at in here and make sure they're operating. So, but thanks a lot for watching this video and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.